Okay. Question. Earlier in your presentation, you talked about um, spirit attachment. Is that what you're talking about now? Uh -huh. And um, if so, um, are you talking about, I mean, a <laughs> spirit that just hasn't passed into the light yes. that's been hanging around for yes. a while? Yes. Okay. And, and when you talk about the demon, are, are you just talking about, you know, a, a negative spirit? One that's not a human spirit, whose function is to keep humans from their own light. Oh, okay. And so, I mean, do you run into this uh, on a All regular basis? Oh, yeah. Whoa. Okay. Common. There you have it. Common. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> They're Thank everywhere. You. They're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's just very usual. I have a real hard time with that. Okay. If God is everything and we believe that God is everything, there is no thing other than God. What exactly are you calling a demon? Someone who is a reflection of the belief that we all hold mostly unconsciously, of separation from the divine. Yes. Then it's an illusion. But it's a, a reflection of our collective belief in separation. And, and I understand that. Okay. And it's an illusion. So I don't want to give any, any energy to it as if it is anything other than illusion. That's fine. You can choose to work that way. My experience is that lots of people have uh, dark ones attached to them, and the wonder of it is, when you clear them out, a, a shift happens in how they feel in themselves. Someone who might have been uh, angry or aggravating all the time or pissing and moaning, and you uncover and work with them that there's some little blob in their heart that's dark and has been there for 20 years, and you clear it out using angels of the white light, all of a sudden they go, Whew, I feel lighter. So, yes. Do you find that when you do that work, Greg, that the demons also are sometimes lifted into the light? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That there's healing That's there what happens. as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let, let's be clear about that. That, uh, and I've, I've done this with dark ones and I know what happens to them when I'm when I don't do something. You can. This is. Some of you may go. Oh, I'm not ready for this one. Okay, but if if you first ask the angels of the white light to envelop the dark one in a web of pure white light, then you've got their undivided attention, and they're not going to have the same attitude. Usually, they have a very bad attitude. Okay, then you can say now. You can say, I just want you to look into the center of your being. You can do this. And they go, well, I don't want to go in there. It's, it's no good. Or you want me to find my own light. I know what you're doing. You know, <laughs> things like that. And, and then you say, well, that's OK. You, know, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. But if you want, just take a look in there and see what you notice. And Well, it's all red and scary. OK, now go through the scary. What do you come to next? Oh, well, there's a light in there. What does it feel like? Well, it's small, but it feels warm. OK, go more deeply into that. And they start to transform in the room. OK, and now how are you? Uh, Mr. Dark Person, you know, how's, how are you doing? Talk to them like, you know, and they go, well, I feel entirely different. Anything you want to say to my client here about how you feel? I am so sorry. They always, if you do that, 85% of the time, I mean, it takes work to do it, they come to remorse for how they have mistreated, misled, misguided the client. I've been told 
that that is the same process that they come to when you ask the angels of the white light to take them into the light. Why would it be otherwise? Cast thee into outer darkness. They already are the darkness. <laughs> you know? So, but that's their illusion, to use Andrea's word. Their belief in that, that they're bad and they're no good and they're just out to screw everybody and that's their job and that you got to be afraid of the light. They'll lie to you about the light, they were told. You know, they've all been programmed in that. Um, it's almost as if creation, which is an act, took all of our fears, all of our souls, states of fear, and went, <coughs> let's make a baseball team out of, out of this energy. You know, because it's their energy, I mean, us, reflected as if there were a dualistic universe, as if there were good and bad, night and day, dark and evil. Not that there is, but as if there were, because when we first came out, we went, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. And meanwhile, God is still inside. He, you know, what did he say? He put it, put himself where we would never think to look. Yes. These dark guys that attach themselves, do they? Would they have a relationship with the the, the soul, or is it? It's like I'm just going to hop on board and make this soul's life. Well, uh, kind of both, but it's really the soul perceives a relationship with the dark one. Or not. It may be they just hopped on board. There are a lot of those that just, you know, you walk into a bar, have too many beers, and you walk out with a lot of friends you hadn't invited. Dark ones, alcoholic earthbound. Oh, okay. You know. but, but I mean, but, but the individual, the soul has to be open to that. Other, I mean, you know, I mean, if I've well, got myself covered let, in white light or let, whatever, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just going to assume that that's not going to happen. That's a good assumption. And by assuming that, you will be in a preventative mode. The best thing is to live your life to the fullest from the self on out and be devotional about it to your God and your way so that your heart becomes that same heart and you have that relationship. Then they don't want to bother with you. They wish they could, but they can't get in. Your atmosphere is uh, somewhat impenetrable in that state. So the more you devote your life to being in union inside, then they just won't show up. It's not like they don't, you know, they no, can't go see her, anybody else I can, you know. And then there may be relationship that where, where someone sold their soul to the devil. That happens. They, uh, it, you know, where the person's in a vulnerable place, let's say that they were abandoned and they're pissed off about it and they grow up and they're 18 years old and it's a female and they want that guy over in the next forest in their uh, um, medieval village life and, uh, and he has shunned her and she's pissed off and she goes to see the witch, the local witch and says, can you help me? Oh, sure, my dear. No, just do these things and come into my realm and hang out with me. And she attaches in that relationship her energy to the young girl, <coughs> gets the boyfriend for her. And then she, the, the young girl finds out the boyfriend is, is not a good piece of work and is all upset. But by that time, she's held tight by the witch. And so... The witch dies and attaches permanently to the young girl who's now 40 years old and, and then goes on into other incarnations. The witch drops off and reattaches, witch drops off and reattaches. Yeah. Until that attitude that she had in the beginning, that vulnerability is healed. Then. There's no function for the witch to try and control the client anymore.